Hello my fellow developers, in the previous episode we learned how to get started with Postgres as a vector database. We figured out how to install the PG vector extension and how to use it to store embeddings in the database and do a similarity search over that vectorized data. And today we are making a step forward. We will see how to use specialized indexes for the vectorized data to boost the performance of our generative AI applications. Let's dive in. Let's remind ourselves of the application that we created in the first episode. We built a service that suggests Airbnb listings for those traveling to San Francisco. So let's say that you're heading to San Francisco, you want to stay in a nice place near the Golden Gate Bridge, you need two bedrooms, kitchen and a coffee maker. That's a reasonable choice. Just click the search button and the service will return you at least three most relevant options. How is this service implemented? We use OpenAI APIs to generate embeddings for the user prompts and for their descriptions of Airbnb listings. We use Postgres as our vector database. Here is the search places method, that's the implementation. First we take the user prompt, we make a call to the OpenAI embeddings model, that returns a vectorized representation of this user prompt. And also previously we used the same model to generate embeddings for the descriptions of the Airbnb properties. Once we get this embedding for the user prompt, we are running this similarity search request over the Postgres data that returns the most relevant Airbnb listings based on your desires and wishes. Once we get this data back, we create a JSON that is returned to the UI of the service. Easy, right? However, what's the algorithmic complexity of the current implementation? It's very easy to check. Let's copy this request that was executed over the Postgres data and we will paste it here. We want to see the execution plan that was used by the database. For that, you just need to add this explain statement to the beginning of your request. Once that request is executed, let's just print the whole result. We will find the details of the execution plan. All right, we updated the implementation. Next, we need to restart our backend. The application is up and running again. Let's execute this prompt one more time, jumping back to the result. You can see all the details. And if you scroll up, that's the query plan that says that the database was doing the full table scan over their Airbnb listing table. So the question is, is it good enough? Do we need to optimize anything? Let's check how many Airbnb listings do we have in our database right now. For that, let's just do select count from Airbnb listing. And it's said that we have a little bit more than 7,500 Airbnb properties in our database, which means that for this small data set, it's okay to do the full sequential scan. But what if you have hundreds of thousands or millions of embeddings stored in Postgres, then the full table scan might not work for you, my friend. And that's the time for the index that you can create over that vectorized data. Starting with the create index command, the name of the index is going to be vector index and it will be built over the Airbnb listing table. Next, the PG vector extension supports two indexes at the moment and one of them is HNSW, which stands for the Hierarchical Navigable Small World Index. That's the most popular index these days because it allows you to find the right trade off between the search performance and the accuracy or relevance of your results. We will build this index over the description embedding column and we are going to use the cosine distance for this vector. Why? Because in our service implementation, when we calculate the similarity between the user prompt and descriptions of Airbnb listings, we are using the cosine distance. Finally, you also can redefine a few parameters such as M, I will set it to 4, and EF uh, construction, I will set it to 10. Depending on the values selected for these two parameters, you can strike the right balance between the index build time and the accuracy and search performance of your requests. Why is it so important to pick the right values? Well, HNSW is a multi-layer index where every layer stores a graph of interconnected points. When Postgres builds a graph for one of these layers, it will take a vector and will find the M closest neighbors for that vector. Those closest neighbors are selected from a list of candidates. The size of that list is defined by the EF construction parameter. 
right? So in this particular case, when Postgres will be building our index, it will take a vector, it will find 10 candidates for that vector, and then it will select four closest out of that list. Makes sense. So now let's start building this because it will take some time. Excellent, the index is ready. Let's see how much time it took to build it. Going to the logs, it took 37 seconds to create the index. It might sound a lot for our small data set, but that's the world we live in with those generative AI applications. And you have choices. If you set the M and EF construction parameters to some high values, then the index build time will take longer. But you will have better accuracy if you set these parameters to some lower values, then the index build time will go down, but you will have lower accuracy. You have choices. Now, the index is ready, and let's see if it's used by our application. Jumping back to our application. Let's execute this user prompt one more time. We've got the same suggestions, the same recommendations. How about we check in the logs generated by the backend? If you search for the access method used by Postgres this time, scroll up, you'll find that Postgres continues doing the full table scan. What's happening? Let's investigate in our source code. Here is, you see the older by statement. If you remember, we created the index using the cosine distance between the vectors. But here is, we are trying to order by the similarity, and that's not gonna work for Postgres if you want to use index. But it's easy to address. Let's just order by the distance between the user embedding and Airbnb properties. We are changing it here in the main request, and also we need to introduce this same change in our statement that runs the explain command. Done. Restarting the backend. And now when we jump back to the application, I want to keep this result generated by Postgres when it was doing the full table scan. For that, let me rearrange this screen a little bit. I will push this result down and then I will open another tab. And in this step, we are going to run the same user prompt. All right, we've got some result. Let's check the logs of our backend. Is Postgres using their index scan this time? We'll figure out this quickly. Excellent, Postgres used the index scan this time. But what's about the results? If you compare the suggestions that were generated by their index scan, the window in the top, and the full table scan, the window in the bottom, we will see that they're not exactly the same. But also there might be some intersections. For instance, the first Airbnb listing that was recommended by the index scan goes the second in the result of the full table scan. And that's one of the points you need to keep in mind that indexes that are used for vectorized data are not supposed to return 100% accurate information. Keep this in mind when you're building generative AI applications. With that, our job is done for today, my friend. We learned how to create HNSW index in Postgres. With that index, you can continue running high-performance requests over the vectorized data. And it doesn't matter whether you store just a few thousands of embeddings or you keep millions and millions of vectors in your database. In the next episode, you'll see how to scale Postgres beyond a single server capacity. We will learn how to deploy Postgres in a distributed configuration so that you can use more storage and CPUs for your vectorized data. Stay tuned and have fun learning databases. Bye-bye, my friend.